such just, you know, regular features on people, and that's what you see most of the time, is just very standard features, um, very average features, but I think like, unique, cool features, just, oh, they're so cool. I think they're, they make someone so beautiful. Okay, so for the next question, it is, do you think overcoming challenges always improves someone's character? So the whole reason there is something in my hair that is bugging me. Um, but the whole reason I even put this in the questions video in the first place was I was talking to uh, one of my teachers. We were just having a discussion. And I don't remember how we got there, but he was saying, in his opinion, the way in which someone like goes through the most personal growth is like through facing adversity and then overcoming it. So the struggle, you know, struggling, overcoming struggles um, always leads to, you know, growth, personal growth. And I don't know why, I just like, usually I agree so much with what, you know, that teacher says, but for some reason I just, like, didn't agree with that at all. And I was asking people, like, well, do you think overcoming a struggle always, you know, you come out on the other side as a better person? And a lot of people said yes, but that just confused me because, I don't know if it's just me, but if you look at people who, you know, are, like, serial killers, for example, a lot of the time they faced you know, abuse when they were younger, or, you know, like, a lot of trauma and stuff like that, and, you know, most people who go through that, the majority, I would say, like, 99% of people who face that, like, come out as a better person because of it, and, but you look at that 1%, and that made them, you know, who they are, and that really shaped like, behaviors that made them a bad person, you know what I'm saying? So, I just thought it would be so interesting to see what people said. Personally, I don't think that it always improves, but I think it, for the most part, it does. Hopefully, that makes sense, but anyways, on to the next one. Uh, do you think there is a right age to get married? And I don't really think so at all, really. I, I think that as long as you and your spouse, you know, your partner, are both happy with it, you'll, you know, you'll both feel ready, and you're of the legal age to do so, to go for it, you know, I think you should be able to get married when you want to, okay, uh, what is something people learn only once it is too late, um, I think just people in general are so trusting, especially when you're little, like, kids are so naive for the most part, and so trusting, and I think a lot of people just learn when it's too late not to trust people or like about putting your trust in certain people. Um, you know, I've never had someone say, oh, I just like grew up not trusting people or, you know, I grew up trusting people and then just one day decided not to before anything bad happened. Like, 
sets of lyrics. Um, the first one is, I want to believe, but instead I look at the sky and I feel nothing. And, you know, you, I have a lot of religious family members and I know that when they're going through really tough times, you know, they'll look at the sky and they'll feel this sense of comfort, like God is watching over them. And you know, whenever I try to do the same, like I'm just searching for some sort of comfort, for some sort of like, you know, like everything's gonna be okay, like something's watching over me, I look at the sky and I just don't feel anything. And it's one of the most lonely feelings in the world. Um, and then also the other one is, um, oh my gosh, I'm like totally blanking on it. Sense in my head. Um, ooh. I'm like totally blanking. This is very, very bad. Okay. Oh, here we go. Um, this one. Whoa. Okay. Here we go. But you'd know I'd stand on a corner, embarrassed with the picket sign, if it meant I could see you when I die. But that's impossible. So, she's basically saying if you look at a lot of, you know, religious individuals, um, you know, they'll go on to corners. She, I know, it, like genius, you know, where they'll let you, or they'll let the artist, you know, kind of explain different lyrics and such. She said it was about abortion clinics and, you know, like, protesters, especially from churches, will come and protest on the corners. Um, but, you know, she'd and do that and she'd not necessarily at abortion clinics but you know she'd be embarrassed and she'd put her all into protesting for something that she doesn't even believe in if it meant you know she go to she can go to heaven and see the people she loves but you know it doesn't exist to her um, that doesn't exist to me that's not what I believe either and again it's almost about that loneliness like um she says, like, when you're gone, um, because I think when you're gone, it's forever, like, it's just after that, like, once you're gone, it's just, like, once you're dead, there's nothing after that, and the song just, like, perfectly encapsulates just the loneliness that you feel when you're not religious, and I know people are gonna be, like, just be religious then, but that's the point, like, you're not, and you don't believe in that, but you want to so badly, because you feel so lonely. Oh, I would just listen to that song and just like cry and uh, it just like it gets to me uh. anyways <laughs> oh another one okay um do you resent the way you were raised see this one's tricky for me because I think I turned out to be a good person um you know I've always been smart and I'm witty and I'm funny and I'm well spoken and uh, I'm a good friend and I'm just a good person like I've been told that all my life but I think the means in which I was taught that like I really resent that and this is gonna be something I'm gonna say on this channel once and probably never again so if you're here you're damn lucky because I'm never gonna talk about this um, but, you know, I grew up in a very strict and a very abusive household. Um, you know, it was, it was rough. Um, and I was disciplined very heav heavily, and I think that's why, you know, I am so well-behaved, and I'm told by people all the time that I'm well-behaved and I'm smart, but, you know, because, you know, I was forced to do like school where I can put my all into studying and all that so you know I look at myself and I see myself as a real well-rounded person but I think the way I got to be this way like I 
So